Right. All right, cool. And boom goes the dynamite. Welcome back to another edition of Las Vegas Money Resource. I am your host, Travis Scribner, managing partner of Westpac Wealth Partners here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Joined today, Ian Rogers, president of Investor Media. Uh, Las Vegas Money Resource is going to be your weekly stop for all things, for guess what? Money. All things money related. Uh, talking with small business owners about how they got started in the community, what is the driving force behind their business, where they see the economy going in the city, and other fun facts about their business to hopefully inspire those out there to possibly start a business, uh, work with their business, or just learn a, a bit more about how finance in the city works. As I mentioned, I'm joined by Ian Rogers, uh, the president of Investor Media. Ian, before we get started, tell me a little bit about your business, what exactly you do, uh, and, and your background. Yeah, Travis, thanks for having me, first of all. I'm glad to be on the show. Um, it's uh, really simple, actually. We do uh, plain and simple web design. Uh, we take it from a managed standpoint, so we also offer hosting, maintenance, uh, and update services. So we don't try to just build a site and turn it over to the client. We want to uh, be a resource for that client and provide the security, the backups, the maintenance, and uh, ultimately all the updates after the site is launched and, and built. So all things web media based. Exactly. And, and specifically for small businesses. So if someone were to come to us with like a Amazon type shop, it wouldn't necessarily be the best fit for us, but just a small business who wants to have an online presence and wants to get on the web in a, in a quick and affordable way and use us as a resource to, to keep it going, that's, that's a, always a great fit for us. I think that's a great point you mentioned. You know, when you, I think small business is kind of this relative term. Um, when you say small business, what does that mean to you and, and to Ambassador Media? So what I really mean by small business is a business that doesn't do web design or have a web design department in-house. I mean, small businesses could be somewhere up to probably 500 employees, in which case they'll have most likely some type of web presence uh, team in-house. So for companies that don't have a website design or development staff, we can be that outsourced version uh, of that department. Awesome. So just uh, uh, essentially an, almost an outsourced IT department. Um, exactly. But on the website of things. Exactly. So... Uh, the the common term in the IT like in the IT realm is managed services. What we actually do is what we call managed web design. So it's the same fit, but just a, a little bit different, a uh, little bit different service. Unique name to the company, Investor Media. Talk to me about that. Where did that come from? So it's it's funny. Um, we we kind of started the company. Um, so we started it back in two thousand and nine. Uh, my dad had the domain mvestor.com. We were going to do some media relations and, and some investor relations stuff, um, like with publicly traded companies and pink sheets and things like that. But we actually... Which Las Vegas Money Resource does not condone. No condoning of the pink sheets here. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> It's my compliance. <laughs> absolutely. 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 Um, so we had mvestor.com, uh, which my dad gave to me, and... Um, we just were one day going to do one thing, and which uh, eventually just led to another, which was web design, which was actually my passion uh, back in high school. Cool. You mentioned that. So from an educational standpoint, you know, you were passionate about it in high school. Uh, it feels like I'm aging myself right now when I'm talking to someone who talks about you know, web design being something that they were passionate about in high school. I think I got my first computer my senior year of high school. It was on dial-up and my computer background before that was all around Oregon Trail. Um, so the fact that you had that it was in your mind um, to do something like that is, is, is pretty cool and pretty interesting. You were interested in it in high school. Was there any more education past that? Or were you self-taught around um, the web design? It feels like a lot of people I'm around uh, are almost savants when it comes to these types of things. So is this something that was self-taught for you or that you continued your education with? Uh, I was actually 100% self-taught. Uh, I started in high school. I was the geeky kid in high school who actually had his own website. <laughs> and back in uh, back during that time, it was uh, not a lot of, of people had some type of online presence besides, you know, Facebook or MySpace. Or um, America Online for me. Exactly. Or AOL. <laughs> yeah, exactly. AIM. Yes. <laughs> so um, I did go to UNLV. 
Um, but I went there uh, for about a year and a half for entrepreneurship. And, um, and the reason for that is because self-teaching web design was really the best way for me to learn it. Uh, I had kind of previewed some of the classes um, both at CSN and UNLV and it was frankly just it wasn't the way to go um, with YouTube nowadays with a lot of the articles that are being written by bloggers and uh, other self-taught web developers they just post everything online and you can just adapt and, and learn it yourself and it's even more so today it's just such an interesting component of the business. I think you know so often you hear when you're talking to somebody on the tech side of things that you know I was self-taught. Uh, I think in my industry, you know, if a, a client walks into my office, I say, "No, but I didn't go to school for finance. You know, I was self-taught. They would probably run away as fast as they could." And, exactly. You know, I met with a doctor, and he's like, "I was watching YouTube, and I figured out how to how to do this." It's probably a red flag, but in your industry, it's something that's that's so prevalent, and you can almost. You know, the guys who have a knack for it are able to accelerate the growth curve for themselves with so much information out there. And it seems like that was something that you know you, you kind of took advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And with the way that education is now, it doesn't really make sense to teach web design in you know high school or college, at least given the way that I grew up in high school. Typically, you, the teacher stands at the front of the class and you have a textbook. Any textbook that's printed on web design today is going to be outdated the second it's printed. Before it's even published. Exactly. So by the time you, you put it down onto paper, you need to update that information. And based on my experience of school, that wasn't or isn't the best way of going about. So the, the, really the only option I had was to, to teach myself. And it was something that I loved doing, so it Makes wasn't it a problem. Exactly. <laughs> You talked about obviously you know, the partnership between your dad uh, and yourself at first. Uh, was that the progression into starting the company yourself and kind of going where it is now, or what kind of led to that? So my dad always encouraged me. Uh, I had always had the drive and motivation to start my own company, um, and he just helped me do it. So he was certainly an inspiration. I I, I had a lot of um, other mentors and people. Uh, not only in my family, but outside of my family, who who encouraged me to start. So, it was uh, it was great. Kind of always had that entrepreneurial spirit uh, within you. Absolutely, which always. is interesting. I think you know, uh, you're a relatively young guy, and it seems to be something that's not as prevalent in, uh, I guess, the millennial generation. Uh, they, from what I've seen, so many are so willing to trade their time for a paycheck and, and be an employee. And I think one of the things that's made this nation so great. Uh, is that entrepreneurial spirit. So it's, it's cool to see that with someone that's a bit younger uh, when oftentimes when I'm exposed to this millennial generation, it's not as prevalent. Uh, amongst your peers, how do you kind of feel about that? Um, it's funny, like I go to a lot of conferences and things like that. And there was one here a few, uh, a few weeks ago here in Vegas called GroCo. And there was an entire session on just how to work with millennials like how to hire millennials, how to staff millennials. And I was like, I don't think they're expecting me to kind of show up to this, <laughs> this, yeah. this session here. Um, uh, so I, I have, I have uh, millennials that we have, uh, you know, staffed in our company. And the, the one thing I can say is that they're absolutely great workers and they're not afraid to learn. And in, especially in my business and my line of work, you have to be willing to learn and adapt and change because otherwise we're not really going to have a, a business that that's going to be relevant anymore. Yeah, and no, I agree. I think that's a really, really interesting talking point that I'm sure a lot of people are interested in, in kind of discussing a bit more. We've got to cut to break right now. I'm with Ian Rogers, president of Investor Media. We'll talk more about uh, millennials, uh, his, work, his peer group, how he works with his peer group, and how he hires his peer group uh, when we get back from break.